Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Taking a look at this Texas AM Aggies 2023 spring game. Just finished watching it, and this is one of these teams that we're very excited to watch as they head into 2023. You look at the SEC in terms of talent and rock and recruiting. Like what teams can potentially win SEC titles? Bama, Georgia. If there's another team that's recruited at that level, it is the Texas AM Aggies. And in a way, they're just kind of a sleeping giant. And if that offense can finally figure it out, and Bobby Petrino, in my mind, is a phenomenal hire, very excited to see what this Texas a and team can do. Going to give you guys some takes on some of the players that stood out to us during the spring game now before we get into it again. Just want to say thank you to you guys. It's just been an absolute blast talking spring game, talking some players, learning from you guys and, and guys that you've heard from spring practice notes that might be stepping up. So, again, if you do enjoy the content, Consider subscribing to the channel and let us know in the comments section what players you think we got we need to add to our notebook again. Can't thank you guys enough for all the support, Dill. I'm gonna kick it off to you and let's just start talking about the Jimbo Fisher and Bobby Petrino offensive play calling and what this offense might look like in 2023. You know, to me, this is like one of those moves very similar to what Dabo Swinney did at in Clemson, where both these coaches, him and Dabo are so kind of confident in what they do offensively in their scheme. And, and I don't think they either wanted to, to kind of make a change and reinvent it or, or bring in someone who would kind of have a different point of view on things. But at the end of the day, both offenses and needed it. especially a and M they, they, you needed a new voice. I mean, you just saw like quarterbacks were playing scared and, and they, they, they weren't progressing over the course of the season. And you just saw too many issues. Now I think, for Jimbo Fisher to kind of relinquish some of his control inherently by bringing in a coach like Petrino, I think this is the type of thing he needs to do if he wants to give himself an AM a shot at a title. And my take, and I we've talked about this off air, and I'm I'm really interested to hear kind of what Texas AM and Aggie fans think of this. I think Jimbo Fisher is a phenomenal head coach. I think he's a great CEO. He's obviously a really good recruiter. I think he runs a tight ship. What I think Jimbo Fisher is significantly overrated in is the, is the Department of Offense. Like, you look at his past, like, coaching and offensive play calling experience. If it wasn't Jimbo or Jameis Winston as your quarterback, like, the offenses that have been under Jimbo Fisher have underperformed and not have been great. And so, I think bringing a guy like Bobby Petrino in, and the, the only thing, the only way this works is if Jimbo Fisher really does relinquish the play calling duties and let Bobby Tr Petrino cook with this offense. I think this could be a massive hire because, again, Jimbo Fisher's a good head coach. He's a good CEO of a program. I don't think he's that good of a – look at the, the development of quarterbacks. Like, Kellen Mond never really took that extra step. DeAndre Francois never really did. If it wasn't Jameis Winston, who was a generational talent at the college football level, running his offense, it never really was that good. And it really always seemed to underperform. So, yeah, I think Jimbo Fisher is the guy at Texas A&M. And quite frankly, it kind of stuck with him with how that contract looks. Bringing in Bobby Petrino could really kind of reignite this offense that I really do think is a sleep vagina. Getting into kind of what we saw from the spring game and what this offense might look, what what kind of excites you the most here? I think today, just from, from what you were okay. watching in the spring game, is is their rushing attack. There was something there with that. And they yeah. were going inside, they were going outside, they were hitting guys. The team was getting to the perimeter pretty effectively with pitches and giving Space. those rushing backs a lot of room to operate. Yeah. And then, on the inside, their offensive line is going to be really good, I think. And it, I don't think it gets enough credit, frankly. Yeah. It, it's got a young group. Fair, or it's, it's kind of experienced now. It was kind of young last year. But now it's all these guys are, for the most part, back. And, and, and they played really well. You saw guys like Chase Basantis working today. Looked really good. I'm kind of excited what this offensive line can do in what this rushing attack as a whole can do on, under Bobby Petrino because there was something there, I thought. Yeah, that's that's the thing that jumped out at me from what I saw is just the space that these running backs had to operate. And you have like Devon A. Chain is, is was a phenomenal running back. And you think that running back room might not be as good. It's hard to say there might be a running back better than Devon A. Chain this year, but I think the committee as a whole, you're you're pretty excited about. I mean, Ruben Owens, you taught you asked me who might be one of the more impactful true freshmen in the 2023 season. I think it's Ruben Owens, and he's a guy that can do it both. He's very good in space. He has some burners to hit the big play, but also can run between the tackles. And like you said, this offensive line, I think, might lack a little depth, but those guys playing on the first team, like I thought they looked very good. Again, 
against a very, very good defensive line unit on the other side. We'll get into that later. Uh, I think that group is really under are undervalued. And when you look at how to get a quarterback comfortable, a good run game is exactly what you're looking for. And that's going to be important because at the end of the day, I don't think you're going to get Heisman level quarterback by anyone. And no. And for my sense of watching this game, I think it's going to be Connor Wigman. He was playing with the ones today. Obviously, Evan Stewart and, and Anthony Smith were on his side of the uh, team, if you will, whatever whatever you call it. But so they were working together, and and that to me makes sense. It's like at this point with uh, Max Johnson, it's just like it'd be a lame duck year. It feels like it wouldn't kind of do anything to move this program forward. So why not? Give it to Connor Wigman. He he looks like he's improving. I mean, as long as the decision making's kind of there and he doesn't put the ball in harm's way, I think he he's got the arm talent. Like you saw some really really nice throws, especially to Evan Stewart, and you you saw frankly a couple of drops that could have been touchdowns. And, and I thought he played pretty good for the most part, besides the one bad decision that led to a pick. But to me, I think that's what they're going to go with that rushing attack is going to be really important because you don't want him taking. We talk about two best friends. I mentioned the running game being one of the best friends to a quarterback, having a wide receiver one who, I mean, outside of Marvin Harrison jr. Is is there a better wide receiver you think? coming? I don't even think it's close. I think like Evan Stewart is nipping on Marvin's. Marvin. Yeah. And I think you can make like Xavier Worthy's really good. And, and there are some good wide receivers. Evan Stewart's in that conversation and the, you seeing him, I think, Texas A&M had to try to lean on him a little too much to be that wide receiver one, especially when Aeneas Smith went down last year. As a true freshman, that's a lot of responsibility. As a second-year guy, I think Evan Stewart's one of those guys that this he's going to get peppered with targets. And then people aren't talking enough about Aeneas Smith coming back. Obviously, COVID, extra year of eligibility. He's been a guy I've been banging the table for, for, for years at this point. I mean, in terms of getting separation early and being really good after the catch, that's Aeneas Smith's game, and that's – like something so valuable to have to, to a quarterback, a guy where I can get the ball out quick to a guy who's going to make a play for me. That's how good offenses run. You get the ball in space to your playmakers. That's how you score points at the college football level. Aeneas Smith's a guy that represents that opportunity. I like this wide receiving group. I think Moose Muhammad's also very solid. I'm excited to see what this offense can be like in Bobby Petrino with under Bobby Petrino. Well, that's what I'm hoping to see. It's like Evan Stewart can really develop into that premier deep threat wide out and grand evan stewart can do everything across the board i think he, oh he's, he's a he looks so he's a really good deep ball catcher he caught a couple today one i think they called out of bounds but i was a really good catch. that was close they but, should get a spring game you gotta give it to him no i know you should got it but but like i'm hoping they can get anea smith working back to yeah. i think what he does best and, and i think anea smith had to do a lot last year because evan stewart was kind of coming along yeah. but but hadn't quite arrived until the end of the year, probably. But if they can let Moose Muhammad and, and Evan Stewart kind of work that deeper portion of the field, which is what those two really can do, and, and let Ania Smith kind of get back to work underneath and and just create some sort of space, because even you look last year, there just there was never space. And obviously, you touched on that. But again, if they can get him and Ania Smith, like those guys, some room and, and these running backs who I thought looked really good, I. I just feel like you can have a good dynamic offense, and that's kind of what Bobby Petrino. I mean, you look at what he did on Louisville. That's kind of what he was able to do is is get guys, get their productive players, especially Lamar Jackson, in in positions to be really effective, and not be like boxed in like it feels like A and M has. And, and like looking back at we we kind of criticized Jimbo for his <laughs> quarterback development. The wide receiver development has been just as bad, if not worse. And like they've recruited that position pretty well. But in terms of developing those guys into being all SEC dudes, all Americans, draft picks, like it, it's been bad. And so that's another thing you're looking at with a with a new a new guy, obviously, hopefully running the offense. And that they, not another thing, it's a big thing that Jimbo Fisher needs to let Bobby Petrino have this offense. You're, you're kind of excited to see some of these wide receivers maybe kind of blossom into the studs that they athletically can be. Now switching over to the defense side of the ball, I. So this is a group that I think is you look at just purely the defensive line, the front seven. I think it's one of the best groups in the country. And just to get into, I was excited to see Walter Nolan play really good football. He was okay. a guy who you kind of felt like could have made an impact as a freshman, obviously, and make it on the field a whole lot. And it is a competitive unit. I mean, Shamar Turner's played really good football for a while. McKin- McKin- Jacks, McKin- Big Mac. Really good play. Yeah, I know they kept using that nickname on the broadcast. They were obsessed with it. <laughs> the Mama oh, Kinley was funny. 
Yeah, and that's what you want to see. Like, you want to see guys like because Walter Nolan again, he's a guy who I think can be. I mean, Jackson's a good player, but Walter Nolan is a, a legit first round pick. I mean, he was really disruptive getting in the backfield. And then Shamar Stewart's a guy I'm just hoping to blossom yep. into being that real star because last year you saw he has a, a level of power in his game that it felt like guys couldn't really compete with or, or had a lot of trouble with. If he just refines his pass rush game, he's going to be a hammer. And that, then you're kind of inside and out on the defensive line. You're just going to be really tough. And, and George has shown that if you can be really good up front, you're a problem. And, and no one else George has shown is if you have a really good group on the defensive line and it, Texas A&M is going to have a good group on the defense line. If you have athletic, fast linebackers, that opens up a lot of what you can do in terms of like A-gap blitzes. Let those linebackers absolutely cook if they're playing clean. You look back at that 2021 Georgia team, phenomenal defensive line, and you have guys like N'Kobe Dean, Channing Tindall playing behind them. Like Those guys were cooking because they were playing clean. Texas A&M has some young uh, – Really, not necessarily young, maybe, but guys that I should have thought maybe they, they feel that. like they're young because they were playing when they were young, and now they've just blossomed into really good older players. But and I'm, I can't wait to see what those guys look like when when they're playing clean behind a great defensive line. And that's again, like Russell or Edrin Cooper and Chris Russell. I they they're two guys who they probably could have gone to the draft this year because it was a weak linebacker class, and I think those two guys. They have a shot of being late day two, or early day three picks, just because, again, by the nature of the class, and you get them back. And obviously, you've been talking Jimbo Fisher, like good recruiter in high school, really good recruiter, keeping this team together. Because Aeneas Smith's another guy who probably could have gone pro and and chose not to. So you got two guys there. Tareen and York played really good football today, so he, I think he'll add some depth that maybe they were lacking. But again, you you got to deep or an experienced group of line set of linebackers i should say the two of them and then you got tory and york backing them up you you got a really formidable front seven now not to backtrack here but we did forget to mention another stud on the defensive line who hasn't even put on a texas a&m helmet yet david hicks not early enrollee he's good he i mean like arguably the most dominant guy in this 2023 class yeah. in, in terms of like you watch like the the, the camps like this dude's different he's going to be a guy that you kind of work into that rotation early because he's a, he's a guy that's going to be able to play early. Now, this secondary, you lose some guys. Jalen Jones, a, a guy we really like in the 2023 NFL draft. Antonio Johnson was phenomenal for years for Texas A&M. They went to the portal and got two sneaky, really, really good additions. Tony Grimes was a guy that was mocked in first rounds heading into the 2022 season. And then that UNC defense just like fell apart. Like that, I don't know what was going on with Gene Chizik in that UNC defense, but it was it was a disaster. Tony Grimes with a change of scenery, playing behind a very good defensive line. I'm very excited to see what he can do. And then you get a guy in Sam McCall who was a top 50 dude nationally in that 2022 class. Didn't really find like a role at Florida State. He came in as an athlete. Didn't really commit to a position. Coming in and playing that cornerback spot, he's a hyper-athletic dude. I don't know if he'll start, but he'll play some meaningful reps. And I like how that secondary is looking. That's not even talking about a guy in Damani Richardson. He's one of my favorite players in college football. I mean, just the heartbeat of that defense. Like, you watch when he's on the field for that AM team, they just play different. They play. They look tougher. They look – I mean, like, just the defense you want to play. Everyone's flying around, hammering each other. He's obviously one of the leaders of that. He had one of the more intimidating safeties. And when he came out of that Miami game with the uh, targeting, they played different. So to yeah. get another another guy who you just are getting back, who obviously great, great player on the field, makes really big plays, but just a, a, a real leader. And, and then I think he had another guy in, in Gilbert Jarden who, to me, like a versatile player. I, he covers really effectively, which is a trait I don't think enough safeties have. And you're just you got a loaded, I think, class of guys, and they and were playing really sticky today. And, and I'm thinking big things for them. That's what you talk about with this Texas A&M team. Going back to how we kind of started, is there's not many teams that have the personnel and the dudes, just purely the athletic talent and dudes to keep up with Alabama and Georgia. Texas A&M is one of those teams, and that's kind of why you you paint them as a sleeping giant. I feel like the Texas A&M fans are tired of hearing that, right? Like the dark horse, Texas A&M could be good. They have good players. With Bobby Petrino as your OC, like this defense will be good. Defense was never bad. It's just the offense. Like when you play opposite an offense that goes three and out as consistently as Texas A&M did, it's hard to put up good defensive stats. This is a team that if this offense can wake up, 
run the ball the right way that we saw in the spring game, get their playmakers in space, put some points on the board, put some drives up. Like this is a team that can can be one of the more competitive teams in the SEC. And what's even more exciting is that a lot of these guys will be back in 2024. Like a lot of the production you'll see Texas A&M in 2023, those guys will be back in 2024. So they're, I don't know if you want to say light at the end of the tunnel for Texas A&M teams, but this team, I'm really excited to see what they can bring in 2023 because if they can springboard themselves into a really, really special year in 2024, and that's kind of what you said after that recruiting class, like look for those years to bring back the the Texas A&M Aggies. That'll do it for the fellas again. This is a fun team to watch. If you're an Aggies fan, like we'll probably be talking a lot of Texas A&M football in the summer. Appreciate all you guys supporting the fellas. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.